first. <coughs> Dear Lord, we're again thankful for the opportunity to be able to serve in this capacity. We thank you for those that are present here in this meeting tonight. Lord, that you bless the efforts that have been put forward to make it possible. And all the provisions have been provided. Lord, we pray for those that are, that are sick tonight. Mr. John, that you would comfort his family in this time of need. Also, Mike's family, the loss of the loved one. Those others that may be sick and unable to be here tonight. I pray, God, that you would again guide and direct us as we are about the business of the community and the parish. We might be thrift with our neighbors and our families. Funding that's been provided here for us to manage. We thank you for your guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> Seconded. Your vote, please. Aye. Aye. New business approval of the financial report. Financial report has been approved and seconded. Any response? that 
by the same token of you assigning it and committing it to that purpose, if you should need it for something else, you as the board would make a new resolution and designate the monies to be used for something else. Otherwise, when you go to spend the money for a piece of equipment, you would just note it as using committed funds. Or if you were going to use non-committed funds, you could do that as well. But what I was told by the assistant chief here was that you would use the committed funds for the purpose of the committed funds first, and then any uncommitted funds, which made sense to me. Okay. You do still have a good fund balance. You're managing your money well, and as a taxpayer, I appreciate that. Um, there are some new things to be done this year. You'll see in the back on page 27, they're in the summer session of the Legislative Board of Louisiana. They passed Act 706, which requires head of agencies of pretty much any political anything to have their per diem, their unvoucher reimbursements, and they have a long list of things. You'll note the items down below. It affects the board members and what you receive and also what Mr. Troy as the fire chief and Mr. Charlie as whenever he was fire chief, the different amounts that they have to disclose. So in the regular notes, y'all are already disclosing per diem for meetings, but this is additional, your training. Any money that you receive pretty much gets disclosed in the report as a note as required by law. For Mr. Charlie and Mr. Troy, the salary, the state supplemental, the retirement contributed by the district, health insurance, like I said, unvouchered reimbursed expenses, meaning if it, and then they had certain ones that had to be included even when they had a receipt, because he didn't have any that didn't have receipts. The training was another one of those that you have receipts for, but it has to be <coughs> membership dues that even when they're required, it has to be disclosed. Okay? Then your budget was within the variances allowed, and that's a good thing. That's on the page before, on page 26. And then the part that everyone's concerned about is that even though there was an unqualified opinion, it was noted during the meeting for 2013's audit report that there would be some findings because there was at that time a full-time firefighter who was not participating in retirement and by law if you are a full-time firefighter and you earn more than $375 per month you have to participate and that was not done and then with a current firefighter this year he was participating, but then there were some contributions that didn't get remitted during the end of the year. And so they're listed as payable and noted that you're going to be doing that because you meant to. And the other one is the bid law, and that's because of the pagers. Even though they were purchased at two different times, you can't make that large of a purchase, even whenever it's a special anything without either bidding it out or having an interstate contract. And that's not my rule, that's a state law, and so I had to report it as such. Do you have any other questions for me? Most of the stuff is the same as usual, that y'all have lots of assets with equipment, they're big expenditure items, that you receive tax monies and that you spend within your means. This year you'll see that because of some capital outlay, you did spend more than you received in the current year, but you had enough surplus to handle that enough fund balance.
you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. And Mr. Troy's called with different questions, and I'm available for that as well. And I appreciate y'all letting me be of service to y'all. <clears throat> Any questions or comments? I don't have any. Um, so, all right, we, we accept your report. Do we also need to make enough that we're sending a reply to you about the. Um, the replies on the report as well. Right. So, it's. They can say if they agree with it or if they if I need to change it before submitting the report. I guess it's two separate things, right? It's up to y'all. Except, except of the except this as is and say it's available at the fire station for you is what they need to do. If they're okay with it, they can accept it and it will be submitted to the legislative auditor as required. Okay. And if they need anything changed, then I would revise it, represent it. I need a motion to accept the audit report as stated. I move we accept the audit report as submitted. Be submitted to the uh, legislative auditor as, as, uh, as submitted. Second. I have a motion and a sec second to accept the audit report as submitted. Vote on it now. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is set really great for 2015. All right, I have two pieces of paper here for y'all that I need to read, and then I guess y'all have said. Hey, we have a resolution. Be it resolved that the following millages are hereby levied on the 2015 tax roll of all properties subject to taxation by Wind Parish Fire Protection District Number 3. Wind Parish Fire Protection District 3, 12 mills. That's the same as last year. There would be no change. Be it further resolved that the proper administrative officials of the Parish of Wind, State of Louisiana, be and they are hereby empowered, authorized, and directed to spread said taxes as here, here and above set forth upon the assessed tax rolls of said parish for the year 2015 and to make the collection of the taxes imposed for and on behalf of the taxing authority according to law and that the tax in here and levied shall become a permanent lien and privilege on all property subject to taxation as herein set forth and collected thereof and collection thereof shall be enforceable in the manner provided by law. The foregoing resolution was read in full and the roll was called. And then I'm reading this now. This is the resolution. I'd like to um, get y'all to vote on it. Um, this is to tax the same 12 mills that we did last year. We roll call on the building rate right set for 2015. Brian? Mike? John? Yeah. And you, Mr. Harrod, if you agree to it? I agree. All right, so the yeas are Harrod, Carpenter, Holden, and Montgomery. Nays are none. Abstain or none and absence are Martin, Womack, and Price. And this will be certified today at this date by Vice Chairman Billy Harrod. All right, that being done, now I have an affidavit um, that says we did this. It, our affidavit is before me. This will be for a notary. I'll get it notarized here shortly. Uh, before me, the undersigned notary public, which will be cramped when I get a hold of them tonight. The uh, building commission qualified within the um, Applestead Parish, which is Parish of Wynn. And state person came up here to Billy Herod, who after first being duly sworn, did pose and say that he is duly authorized vice chairman of the Wynn Parish Fire Protection District Number 3 of Wynn Parish. A meeting was held in accordance with open meeting laws. It was posted on our board 24 hours in advance. Also, we had a notice in the paper and a 4 by 4 block, and that is meeting these um, requirements. We've given the notice, and also in our meeting prior, we noted that this vote would be taking place tonight. And so a quorum or simple majority, which is four, was here, and that the total membership of tax authority with physical presence and voting, or a simple a quorum, and that y'all voted tonight. And then we're going to get Mr. Billy to sign this and we cramp it and notarize it, and we should have our millages approved. 
based on y'all's approval of the resolution. Any comment from anyone? <coughs> Any that's public comment? In public. Firefighter? <laughs> Next item on the new business, Dustin Parker, sick leave. Um, Mr. Parker, in the course of his employment here, has um, earned sick leave at the rate of one day a month for every month that he's worked. In the 1st of March, he took off five days for his wife to have a baby as he did the hospital and all. And at that time, I was not understanding that, that maybe what sick leave was for. And since I didn't pay it at that time, I just needed permission to um, say that so that would be a qualified sick leave. And it was five days you were off for that? I was technically seven, but, but I'm only asking for five but if they're willing to do that. And I just need the paid man. So I, I, I just want to make sure I understood it right. That I know that for like leave everywhere else, the the wife having a baby, even the husband, you know, needs to be there. And he was at the hospital, so I just I lived there for a week. I just had permission to go to the party. Take <laughs> his burn sick leave. I make a motion that he paid the sick leave for the time off the hospital stay. This is why. necessarily both sides of the conversation. If we're talking on this radio here, it doesn't record. It did record any other radio of your own, but for some reason, it doesn't do this one. It has problems. It's for some reason, it don't keep accurate time. It's uh, It's been as much as 15 minutes off. Uh, why it's not doing that, I don't understand. I've had to go, to, I've had to go in and actually change the time to get back to the correct time on multiple occasions. Now, when he says change time, he's just adjusting the time to keep it current. Right. He's not changing on anything that's been recorded. Right. So, um, it's going to be a fairly expensive item. I would, I would, I would take bids and quotes on this. I'd probably get three quotes and then bring it before the board at the next meeting. I just want to. Can I interject something on that? While we're doing this, could we expand our capability a little bit? We don't record our landline telephone nor do we record our 700 radio traffic. If we're going to do this, could we approach it to get an inclusive to uh, record high band, 700, and our landline, uh, and make everything that one fell swoop, bring us in compliance. I mean, there is no law as such, I think, but from a liability in Texas, that's why I think it would be our own benefit to have everything recorded. Not, not recording the facts line, just the, uh, the main administrative line. So there is a secondary line for personal use? No. no. Yeah. Well, the, the fax line, if, if they wanted to use the fax line for, for personal, but the, uh, the, the main 628-1230 would be recorded. And this is just dated and aged? Dated and aged. Now, I don't even think we can make proper backups. We've tried. I think Dustin's made one set since we've been here. And it's hard to make because it's taken them on the CDs. And so you're talking about a digital type of board? I think. We just purchased one for 911 done two or three years ago. Three or five years ago, wasn't it? I don't know, three years ago. I think it was just three years ago. I think it was. Maybe. And, and anything that gets it in digital, uh, typically they have one terabyte, 
of internal memory. I believe the one we bought for 911 had an external one terabyte sitting there as a as a backup in case something happened to the uh, to the main drive that recorded simultaneously. Now we're not talking anything quite that that fancy. That was a 24 channel. We're talking maybe a four channel here, um, just to record our what's what's necessary out here. Our our main radio traffic is recorded at 911. Our radio traffic is recorded there, but that's all. Our 700 meg traffic is not recorded anywhere. We'd like to include that, include that here. So all you're asking is that you can entertain for bigger bids. Right, I'm gonna get quotes, but I just I didn't see this is good because this is because I didn't know how big of a system we need. Yeah, I think four channel would be good. There would be a little additional charge just from the voice of experience when we interface our 700 meg radio at the at the sheriff's office. Uh, we had to we had to get a modification done to the radio. We have an EF Thompson radio here beside the sheriff's office. I think there was about a four hundred dollar modification charge from the radio to make it compatible with the uh, recorder. So they would, it wouldn't be strictly just recorder, but it would be some, some radio charges to interface it with the recorder properly to make sure it works like it like it's supposed to. I don't, I don't see how we can avoid it from a liability standpoint. It's just I don't I don't think there's a law as such. I think it's just good business that we yeah. that we do. Another layer of protection. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And also, with that being said, that particular recorder on two different occasions since I've been here has actually stopped recording. Is come in to get all my times off the call and nothing there. Well, so that's one thing. One point you want to make: the times that we use for our calls are got are is good from that recorder. Nobody keeps track of our time. The sheriff's office doesn't keep track of what time 101 with 10 a.m. link. All that time is gleaned from that recorder right there. So we, we do use it on that every power call we go on. That recorder is used to, to get the time that we're required to keep. So it does serve an uh, important function. And I can say this from the voice of experience. I haven't said in court cases before that required that times were compatible with other times that was reported. It, it, it's a very critical component of any court case. Now, our number not being our number being listed as a non-emergency number, you still think it? Uh, and, and that would be y'all's decision. I, I, I suggested that you know, we don't receive emergency phone calls on six two eight one two three zero if we're not provided. It is a non-emergency number. I mean, that, that's easy enough. Just just don't do it. I think a four channels still would be the the, 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 the minimum the minimum that we would look at, and and, and, and have a spare channel. Just record that the the DHF will be on one channel. The 700 has to be on two different channels, I believe, the way, the way that operates. So we'd have to be using three and four channels. And when you get quotes on it, you get quotes on the, the equipment plus the warranty and service information and all that. Yeah. That just, I just want you to be aware of it. It's probably a fairly expensive item. Uh, not as much as you think, I believe. We, I don't remember exactly what they thought. Was it? Uh, it wasn't. It 15, it, 15 it, or 16? I think a little more than that one, about 18. Oh, so, yeah, for a, for a 24 like, channel. We're probably going to have to get bids in too. Uh, well, quotes at the very least. Yeah. It, 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 it's way less than thirty thousand. It'll be quite they have quotes at least. Uh, three written quotes, I believe, yeah. at that price. And I, I know one place to start with where we bought the nine one one, and we can we can find out all the places that are available to do that. We can get the, the three quotes. Okay. Here, will they record all four of our channels, plus the seven hundred? Yes and no. If I'm, 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 let me say, I'm gonna say yes because our antenna here is high enough. Uh, if it's if the traffic is set over the Sykes Tower, it, it has to be within range of this radio because our antenna is high enough. We would be able to hear any and all of the other towers. So, so the answer to that would be yes. You know, even though Lane Road, Brutonsville, Sykes, it would record all of them, and it would record off record all of them simultaneously. That's something we've had a problem with for quite a while. I'll, I'll try to have all that together for the next board meeting. I'll let you get that. Government procedures for stand by the next business. All right. We have in the past provided services to an industry up the road here. And they paid for a reasonable fee to have people stand by. We were
questioned about it has because we had not done it for several years. As a matter of fact, the last receipt that I had when we done it was in 2006. And based on this information that I found in our computer, I went ahead and I sent a man up there. I billed basically. I even I, I got a different rate, whatever. But when we did it here in January 19th and January 20th of 2015, we done it. We billed $45 an hour for the truck and $20 an hour for man that was standing by. I've since realized we're probably undercharging for the truck and maybe even overcharging for the man. What we came up with is that we would, the manpower, we, we need to still bill at approximately $20 an hour because our cost to have an employee is more than just what he makes per hour. Our cost includes, for Dustin, includes a 29% extra for his retirement. It includes our Social Security. It includes part of our payroll. So per man, even though we may charge him $20 an hour, our pay rate here is, is pretty much $10 an hour except for me, which I would probably go up there and stand by anyway. Um, so what we're looking to come up with, right, Mr. Harry's done some research. If you remember last meeting, I asked for permission to go to let the legislative auditor answer back. And as long as this fits our um, purposes, it's legal to do this. At this point, what do we want to charge? I suggested to you last time we could go to the FEMA and get the, uh, and I looked at it, and I can't remember what it all. It tells you for a fire truck, you could charge so much per hour. Uh, I suggest we do that, whatever payment charges we do that. The hourly wage is just what Troy just said. Papers. Charge them $20 an hour, and then we'll, anybody that goes, we'll pay them on the clock here so that it, all hours are recorded, and then the income that comes from this goes back into our general fund. We don't go up there a lot, but. Um, did for a while. We did for a while. And, and Dotson still goes somewhat. And I guess the other thing is, uh, just do we want to do this all through the district? But now, well, it would have to be for the district. Yeah. And part of that was uh, was, a, was an MOU, a memorandum of understanding between the district and Warehouser. It'd be a signed document between the places. And that would be disclosed in your next year's audit report as well as a cooperative endeavor or. As you put it in there. Or, I mean, I'm, I'm using the MOU cooperative or whatever the proper terminology. I, the whatever. Cooperative, cooperative endeavor is the way that. Okay, that's fine. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm not sure Sorry. the term. Sorry, I can't even speak it. So. Whatever, whatever the proper terminology we would, we would enter, enter into that with and with a signed document that covers us as well as them. Well, not far off only on the, the truck fee. I think you said it was around found. 70. I think we're, we're about half, I think. 70 they charge it for that. They not seem to have rates, posted rates. For, for free equipment, yes, and not, not for employees. Uh, yes, they have a price for, for uh, free equipment. And I can easily look at it for you. And I, I, I thought I was having to remember it. And I forgot. I, I think it's $70 or $80 per hour. I mean, there have, they wanted more than one truck on occasion. So I mean, it really spreads us a little thin. But I, I, I don't see a problem. I, I would rather be up there standing by if they had an emergency and ready to rock and roll with help than leave from down here or from Dotson going up there if they had something. I'd rather be there. And if they're willing to pay up front, and there's some other some other people called and want to know if we could um, pump out something or do something which wouldn't have been used with a fire pump. We got a trash pump out there for, for gas. But just kind of a rate for anything that we could do that's not taking a job I think the way the wording read, it's we can also it's something we could also use for training and stuff. I mean, I, we wouldn't want to take anybody else's job that they would want to do, but it's just stuff that we could do fairly easy here. But this was our main one, and we'd have to get a, some kind of memorandum of understanding. And also that paperwork would specify how they notified us. You know, in the past, if there's been some questions in the past, who got notified? In fact, there's a thing in the past that's actually been going on. We just we never were aware of it here at Central Station. It was, you know, there's a, a set procedure how to handle the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. 
know that affects different things, but I think this is our best coverage to cover everything, I'm thinking. Last item on the agenda is first aid kits. What we found out, we had an accident and an injury the other day, and um, we had a little trouble getting together a first aid kit. Um, Jonathan, would you show them what we got right now? Pull this off of our uh, first hand pump, uh, 101. This is what they put together, uh, I don't know when, but the most recent expiration date that's in this box is 2006. Uh, everything's expiring. The sterile solution went out in 2004. Uh, we were able to, to do what we had to do with what we had, but uh, we could possibly, and this is coming from a safety standpoint, we could possibly run into a liability if we were to use a piece of equipment or a dressing or something that was out of date and an infection uh, developed because of that. So, uh, it, in personal opinion, as a firefighter, this needs to be addressed. And again, that is primarily for firefighters of uh, use. I mean, again, if there was a civilian that we were trying to win render aid to, Yes, but it's primarily for firefighters. Um, and, and I was looking through the Gallows catalog trying to find some different prices on first aid kits. They vary in prices. I was hoping um, Gary Peters with the ambulance service was going to be here tonight. He was supposed to try to come by um, and go give us some input or direction on this. Um, Some of the basic first aid kits that's in the Gauls catalog range from 40 to 70. Uh, your major trauma kits, which I recommend putting at least one to four in the parish on different trucks, on most responding trucks, uh, can run up to 340. Are those kits, are they specialized for different levels of training? You get basic life support, and then you can go on up. Um, That's what I'm asking though. Is that, that do we have the training to do it? We, we have, have personnel that will be trained up. We have a couple of them. Um, Harry's expired. I'm expired he, EMT for, for, for whatever work that's <laughs> worth from a training standpoint. But, I have the sufficient training. But Kevin, we, we've all been through, 12 of us went, just went the last two weeks to a, a first aid course. First aid course. I think Pat also had, I don't know whether he's expired yeah. or not. And I know Kevin Chandler's a full EMT. He's is there, is there, is a serving EMT. Mm -hmm. And it's something that he didn't include in that. And we also, I think, need to have a little oxygen source. Because we're talking about possible smoke inhalation. And, and oxygen is going to be one of the most valuable things we can provide to a firefighter. And right now we have no, no capability. I mean, our tanks are got air, not oxygen. And, and we have some, I have like two oxygen tanks back here. I don't think they've been re. I don't know how old they are, I just know they're back there and I have some accessories. But So we wouldn't be looking at buying the actual bottle, just need to get them refilled or switched out with somebody. I think. Actually, I think we'll get those through... Um, Red Ball. 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 You could get them filled through Dixie Medical equipment. Oh, yeah, you're right here locally, yeah. Because mm -hmm. they have the uh, regulators and whatnot and offshore and stuff like that we could, we could get. They should. Well, I think we probably need to. Uh, we're talking about how many units? Well, I'd like to. Um, Central Station, my truck, Dotson's truck, Celine Lake's truck, for sure. Um, Cypress, 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 Cypress Creek responds My truck, if you want to do my truck as well. His truck. Oh. We're talking, you know. Six. Six kits for sure. Full. I want, you know, nice. All basic kits or? Uh, BLS. I okay. think basic would be sufficient. I think that. I, somewhere in the price between 387 and two. I mean, we're still talking under the bid law. It's just, I, time you get all of them, we're going to be just a hair over a thousand, which I need more approval to spend. Mm -hmm. 
I think some of those kids, you buy them as a kid, and you need to buy a replacement oh, package. That's what I would do for a It might be $100 for a replacement content or something. The thing about goals and the way they're set up, when it comes to those uh, first aid kits and medical bags and stuff, you can actually build your own. Uh, you pick out the bag that would fit what you need, and you can actually pull from, take away, and add to as far as your actual medical supplies. And if you keep a running tally of what you have in your kits, uh, when it comes time to refurbish or refill, all you have to do is go back and order the supplies you need for the kit that you build. I can see if there's, I can get, a, you know, a couple of quotes or see, but I just, once I get my quotes and I know I'm getting my best price, I, I want to get them ordered. I think uh, Central Industrial Supply maybe could give you yeah. from a customized, uh, the one thing. <laughs> but I want them in a kit that's labeled and marked at its first day, not, not that. I would like to get to the one thing I hope we could, we could not use. Let's discount the OB of the, 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 the birth of the baby part. Mm -hmm. Let's just don't put that in our kitchen. We're not going to be doing that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be having no baby. We call 911. That's special. That's special. That's special. Oh, All I did was stay outside the bed and say, It's okay, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Well, you can do that. You don't need the other one. Uh, <laughs> I would then make a suggestion that we pursue some, some basic packs for. Um, these frontline trucks, those that are running up to six, you say? Basically six trucks and maybe one, or see about refilling the option buys. I can probably just do that locally. And, and Charlie will help me with that. Most definitely, we need a, especially on the central truck, an oxygen. Okay. While we're uh, addressing that as far as the oxygen and, and the kits, uh, the likelihood of getting a, an actual trauma kit for 101. Uh, a little bit more advanced. Um, we have a few people here at the station that are trained for those kits. Uh, myself included, Harry knows how to use everything in there. Uh, and the training is, is, if we had to train a few more, that uh, very inexpensive. But, uh, just the ability to have it, uh, it's there for us. You know you're getting volunteered to do this research, right? Hey, that's my job. That's, <laughs> that's what I do. So what is your request? My request is, is this is going to be more than my thousand dollar limit once I get the best price for it, it's still going to be. I just need to, once we get multiple quotes and get the best price, I need to get more. I need permission from the board. I guess it's We need to have first aid kits, no question about that. I guess the only hesitation would be care of our firefighters. Yeah, yeah. The only hesitation would be to, to, to get some kind of idea of what the expense is and that's that's not to sound contradictory well, what the need is, but Well would you would you consider five hundred dollars per unit as a max times six and get put a, a max no more than this, but hopefully less? I would think so. would that be given if there's a there's a hard cap to it? This is what we're trying to afford at this point right now. With the goal of trying to equip six, six of our responding units and, uh, and at least one oxygen kit. And if you base that on $500 per, I think or $3,000. I think that's fine. I think it's generous. I think you can do it. Yeah, I'll hopefully I can do it for under for the yeah. six. And then what I'm thinking, we may just. Because this stuff does come with expiration dates, maybe next year look at it again, do a few more, and then start making sure we keep up with all our dates and everything. And we'll, have a few more. <coughs> we'll see also how we use. I just had to use one. We had to use one the other day. They did, and like I said, it was just they were they were scratching to find the, the enough stuff. One thing they may want to consider is is if this stuff becomes shelf dated and in conjunction with the ambulance service. Gary Peters at one time said they would work with us. If we have something that's approaching the shelf life, we could swap them out with that. They would give us something that was a couple of years in the future, and they would, as long as it's compatible with what they had, he could work with us and let them. That way, they wouldn't have to expire. Like I said, probably everything we've got on the end of the truck, the 
the way out of day. Way out of day. But, and as those trucks, excuse me, as those trucks are brought here for the annual maintenance, could we look at them as we go? So we're fixing right all the or fixed by all come through here and, in the next and, month. And we're working on that now. Yeah. Dustin has gone through. He's and that's one thing Dustin's going to do in the future is he's working on his list for all the stations. He's talked to the different chiefs. He's going to go to all these stations and try to get out this list and then work with the stations. And then like when we go up to Dotson soon, he's going to work out a list for Dotson, then give it to Dotson. And when they have their first meeting of the month, they go through and check it out. I know that Jordan Hill does this. All. We just don't get copies of it back here. So we're going to start making sure all these records are sent back to here. Because that's what the district here is formed for. The fire department is spread out. But the district office here is to support them, you out in the field. And, and this is what I'm hoping by doing this, I can support the Jordan Hill Station, the Dodson Station, the Saline Lake Station. I can, I can support it, help keep y'all's records, keep y'all people and whatever y'all need. So, so basically, let's just, um, let's say, I make it get a few more kids if I st and still stay under three thousand dollars. I just need permission to spend more than a thousand dollars. It's on something we need. I can probably do it for a little less. But I don't want to think. I I don't want to go too overboard, but I want to get what we need. Look, it's time to make a motion, and I'll be glad to make one. I, I guess we we'll need a motion. I don't think. I would make a motion that we allot. Five hundred dollars per kit to, to equip six units with uh, basic basic life support or BLS and uh, and we want one trauma kit maybe um, and then oxygen. So we want to we want to equip five kits and then. Trauma kit or six in a trauma? How about like this? Make a motion to, to uh, pursue the basic and or trauma kits to equip six units at the chief's discretion. And the quotes. And the quotes. And the quotes. For a total of $3,000. <coughs> Motion been made, seconded. Call for a vote. Call for a motion to adjourn.